back to the chaos. I'm Ryan, and we've enlisted the help of my buddy, the Italian Stallion Falls here today. So this is going to be our track series prep. So this is kind of step one. So we're working on the 2008 Nissan 350Z today, and these cars are notorious for overheating issues. And so I thought about initially just trying to get like a baseline with everything 100% stock, but. I'd rather not waste time at the track. I mean, if it starts overheating and then I'm sitting on the sidelines, that's not much fun. So I figured we'll go ahead and tackle that. So the goal is to try to get an oil cooler on the car today. We're just gonna try to get the front bumper off because that's really, I think after that, everything can be done with it on the ground. So instead of trying to put on jack stands and all that jazz, yeah, we're just gonna take the front bumper off side by side just so we can get to it a little easier. But honestly, that's what I'm most nervous about because it is an aftermarket bumper and I've never personally taken it off. And it looks like the way that they have it on theirs with some zip ties and some self tappers. So it makes me a little nervous taking this off. What actually comes with the kit there's really not that much to it. It's essentially the oil cooler itself, which I went with the 19 row. So uh, Z1 Performance, they actually offer three variants. There's a 19 row, 25, 34, I believe. Um, I went with the smaller one just cause I'm gonna uh, pair this with an actual oil, larger capacity oil pan. So that should suit my needs. Then we have the oil filter, the sandwich adapter, and I went with the thermostatic version just because it is a street car. I don't want that oil cooler pumping all the time. Uh, you got your bracket over here. That's gonna mount up to the core support and hold the oil cooler itself. And then we have our lines and they're still braided, but I went with the extra, just the extra protective sleeve just to hopefully keep from any frays or anything on our, on our braided lines but we'll jump in this oil cooler box and hopefully there's some instructions in there too. So here's the oil cooler itself. Um, it's actually a little smaller than I was actually thinking in person. Um, so maybe, might be a little second guessing, maybe I should have gone with the 25 row, but I really think this will fit our needs. But bad news, no instructions. So, I mean, there's not much to it. Basically mount the cooler, your lines run off of the top here to the sandwich adapter. And that's pretty much it. It would just be nice to know like torque specs, that kind of thing for different, for all the different fittings. That's step one is we're gonna just do a regular oil change basically. Just drain all the oil and then start with the oil cooler stuff. Paul actually brought one of those fancy, it like where it sucks the oil from the top so you don't actually have to drain it through the bottom and, and go that route. So I've never seen it in person. I've always been curious, you know, I've seen them advertise online and stuff and people that haven't swear by them, Paul I think swears by it or you haven't tried it yet. Yeah, I've used it on a couple of cars and it's pretty awesome the way it works. Okay, so he's gonna teach me something because I've never, I've really never seen it done in person. So it looks pretty neat. So we'll see how it goes. So apparently the way it works is it's actually gonna suck it through where you normally stick the dipstick. And then it'll collect, I guess, funnel through the, through the tube and into the basically big catch can. I know this isn't anything magical, but I'm pretty impressed. It makes it, honestly, we haven't got dirty at all. We haven't had a crawl on the ground. <laughs> Have not dropped like the oil plug into the, you know, to your catch can where you're catching all the oil. So nice and clean. So we have all the oil or 90, probably 99% of the oil out. So we're just gonna pull that filter off. And we've got this little, it's the sandwich adapter that's gonna go, this is where your oil filter is actually gonna tighten to. As you can tell, we're under the car now. This is where your oil filter normally goes. So we have our sandwich adapter in there and we're gonna slide this on and tighten it down. Uh, we put a little bit of the blue thread locker on there. So hopefully that way the sandwich plate doesn't go anywhere when you're tightening your oil filter down. So I'm just gonna thread it by hand to begin with.
because then we'll have to orient our fittings. So I think we'll just go straight down like that. So our oil feed lines will go connect here and run to the oil cooler out front. So I grab a wrench and tighten this down. Now that we've got the sandwich plate on there, we're going to, we have to actually drill a hole just to make the install just a little bit cleaner looking um, and a little bit more factory. We're gonna smoke a hole through, there's this plastic cover. Um, so we're just gonna put and run the oil line through that. So the idea is, so your oil lines have to connect up there and they're gonna run them through this front plastic cover. So we're gonna create a hole here because this is nothing but plastic. Now that Paul has our hole drilled, so we're gonna use that to feed the, the oil line through. So we're gonna carefully take the long hose, shove it through our newly created hole, and just kind of feed it down to our sandwich adapter. Easier said than done with one hand, but get it down there in place, and then we'll kind of snug it up. We're gonna route it underneath the sway bar up to the fitting. So we've just shoved it through the hole. We're on the other side now, and just gonna feed it up and try to tighten it down just loosely so it'll stay up out of the way. So we routed the long line first. Now we're gonna do the short line. And again, we're just kinda doing what we can. So we, you can tell we've got the, the long line ran to where it's supposed to connect to and we'll just do the same with the short one for now. So we're gonna just feed it through that hole. Paul's gonna shove it in. Beautiful. Now we can crawl under the car and hook it up to the sandwich adapter. Again, in true chaos fashion, got all these nice new parts and really can't get the, the most important part on there, the oil cooler. We've got the wrong dang bracket or they, it's gotta be the wrong one. Um, that and then I feel like the kit itself is incomplete. We're missing hardware, like just reading through what should be included. We were missing some things, unfortunately. Um, well, we learned that <laughs> the first kind of bad sign was the fact that we didn't have any instructions and it said it included instructions. Uh, but then as we're just kind of, you know, like that's fine, we don't need instructions. We can just kind of piece it together. It's not that hard. Well, then we started looking at it and this is where we've hit a roadblock. So I'll show you what we're talking about. Yeah, when you put it on the car, there's just no point of contact really to like I feel like it should sit there sorry for all the weight <laughs> but these holes just don't line up like you can get one lined up so you can mount it like that but then if you look on the other side there's a gap like that just doesn't work this is gonna be pretty much we're forcefully <laughs> stopping for the day so we'll pick this back up once we actually get the proper brackets and everything like that um, we've just kind of tucked the hose just out of the way because we're gonna have to roll the car around because of course it doesn't have oil at this point nor can I fill the car with oil so it's a it's a rolling chassis now <laughs> so we'll pick back up when we actually have the proper equipment we're going for round two today so I've enlisted slams help <laughs> um, I appreciate Paul helping out the first go around but we kind of ran into a snag where we just ran out of parts so I contacted Z1 Motorsports and thank goodness they were easy to work with so they sent me everything that we need. Overnight parts from Japan. So I'll show you what we got, but it looks a whole lot better. <laughs> so I mean, I just didn't realize to begin with, I mean, I thought that was very minimal parts, which there's really not much to this kit, but once you see what we got, as far as like the brackets and hardware and stuff, it just, it makes a whole lot more sense. So these were all of our missing pieces and parts from the first shipment. So luckily they were able to get it out to us pretty quickly, but you can tell <laughs> this is the new bracket and just size wise, I mean like that extra inch, inch and a half on our new bracket over here, that makes the world a difference. So our oil, oil cooler will actually be able to fit on there. So big difference. So this is our bracket 
This is where it's gonna connect to our core support, these holes, and then our oil cooler fits nicely on top like that. So then we'll mount it up onto the car. It'll be sitting like this versus our old bracket that I don't really know what this is actually for. So the first thing we're gonna tackle is actually mounting the oil cooler to our bracket and then figuring out exactly how it connects to the car. Now that we have all of our brackets on our oil cooler, we're actually going to place this against the core support and kind of mock up, see where we're gonna want to actually mount this and then we'll mark our holes to begin drilling. Got our holes drilled, kind of had to work the drill a little bit to get them pushed in, but so we got our rib nuts in there. Uh, now the next step is to take with the supplied little rib nut tool kit, we're gonna thread, thread these in there and I guess it makes it expand out because there's like a, with the rib nuts, there's like a little wing expansion point. So we're just gonna thread this through, expand that, then it should be good to put a bolt in there. Now that we have our holes drilled and our rib nuts inserted, I'm actually going to, at this point, mount the oil cooler and it comes with the supplied hardware needed to mount it. And we'll just mount that and then we'll worry about our other mounting point, like the vertical part. We have the oil cooler mounted. I'll be honest, it was a bear. So it's just, it doesn't want to like tighten down all like the rib nuts they give you are a pain in the butt. Getting it aligned is a pain in the butt. Just overall, it's not very fun. Here she is all mounted up. So we used these three, there's three of the rib nuts attachments at the bottom to hold our bracket in place. But then we also have this upper core mount, which we ended up running it here in the middle, you can see where our rib nut goes, but again, just an extreme pain. But it is, it's mounted up, should look good, should be stable. We can start filling this um, cooler with oil and then start attaching our, our stainless hoses. So we got this <laughs> oil cooler filled with oil and overflowed it. So I feel like it's hard to judge exactly how much oil it took. I want to say about a half a quart maybe, but just because it started spilling all over the place. So do be careful of that. Kind of let it pour the oil in, let it settle a little bit, and then pour a little bit more. Uh, just be very careful, otherwise you're gonna end up with a mess. Ask me how I know. Um, now that we got our fittings up here, it's snugged down. I just lubed them up just a little bit before I put them on. So now that we've got them all tightened down, we should be able to put our lines on. Because we did it a touch out of order, we put our sandwich adapter on first. So hopefully I've gone under the car and tightened those fittings down as best I could. So hopefully that <laughs> doesn't provide any leaks, but reading through the instructions, which we didn't have to begin with, but reading through the instructions, you were supposed to basically tighten those fittings to the sandwich adapter first before actually mounting the sandwich adapter. But we were doing as much as we thought we could last time with no directions and that's why we did it that way. So we're gonna fill the car with oil now and hopefully, cross your fingers, have no leaks. As we were filling it, I was kind of nervous because I kept hearing like a trickling noise, but I kept checking underneath and so far like our sandwich, plate, sandwich adapter isn't leaking at all. So we're gonna start it up and let the car run for a little bit and probably actually just kind of take it around the block just to make sure that we get up the temperature and then that thermostatic um, plate actually opens up so the oil will funnel through our cooler. So we had a successful test drive, took it up the road and back long enough for the oil to actually start circulating through our oil cooler, got it up the temperature and everything. So we've come back and there are no 
issues. There's no leaks, thank goodness. So we've done everything correctly. Um, I'm actually not gonna throw the bumper back on yet, nor am I gonna zip tie our oil lines yet. So I don't wanna spoil anything, but there's a future mod coming that I kinda need this real estate. So once I figure out in a future video where that's gonna go, then we'll tidy this up. This is what we're gonna call this install, but I appreciate everybody watching. If you will, subscribe to the channel, and we'll catch you in the next one.